Uh, the foil that you guys chose for the X15 class is what we call the X15 foil. The front wing is the MF820. We also have the 560 available and the bigger 1200 for light wind days. Uh, the MF tail wing. MF stands for Martin Fisher. Uh, Martin Fisher and his team have designed these wings. They are incredibly efficient. They are the ones that we would recommend for course racing in foiling, which is why it fits with the X15 class. This A20 that you see here, for example, has an incredible wind range. You can get going in very light winds, you can control in high winds, and it's incredibly fun course racing on this wing. Like, I love it. I could sail all day long going upwind, downwind, uh, tacking, racing with my friends. It's really, really an amazing wing for the X15, I think. Mm -hmm. The upwind ability is amazing. We've had a lot of racers coming to us saying like, wow, what is that? You know, you know they're not even talking X15, they're just pure racers. They yeah. come to us and go like, what's that foil? What is that? We want to race on that thing. So it's an incredible uh, wing. Martin Fisher and his team, Charles and Mathieu, mm -hmm. they have this new auto optimization method, which actually calculated and designed the wing shape itself for depending on those parameters that we gave. And wow. this is what it looks like. So you're putting the most advanced uh, technology into foil design to be able to optimize the outcome. Yeah. So when kids of a variety of different skill levels are going on the water, they have the most ease, entrance, accessibility, yeah. and then can still race at a high performance. Is yeah. that kind of the equation that it's, it's, goes into uh, it? You said it, uh, you, we put in the most advanced development. It's not advanced. It's incredibly advanced. Yeah. It's like it's like going from a Nokia phone to like a, a, an iPhone. It's, it's a wow. huge gap. Uh, so this wing, it's got the stability, it's got the ease of use, but most importantly, it's incredibly fun to race on. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got, yeah, yeah. when you're racing, you're looking for that spark, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. That, that joy yeah. of racing with the your click. friends. Yeah. yeah, and this wing's got it. And so that's why I'm very happy uh, that you guys have chosen the MF for the X15 class. Cool, well, thank you. Um, can you speak a little bit to the width of the wing? Um, the span. You know, yeah, exactly, the, width, the wing span, exactly, the wing span to what we're gonna be having flying under the water. Uh, so the wing span it's, uh, is an element of aspect ratio. Okay. And there's a rule of thumb, the higher the aspect ratio, the more efficient. And mm -hmm. because when you're course racing, you will want ultimately efficiency, eventually you would be grabbing towards uh, higher wingspans. Yeah. So can you talk for half a second? You know, we're going to have a variety of different people um, and ages coming into the X-15 Youth and Junior class with uh, different uh, experience levels coming into it. And, you know, when we're getting off the water and when we want to go foiling, of course, we have to take off. We're going to have to take off in a variety of different, um, you know, wind conditions, wind ranges, sea states, etc. So when we have, you know, a higher aspect, you know, bigger wingspan, does that help with the immediate, you know, lift? Off. Yeah, absolutely. These cool. uh, the A20, for example, because it's so um, high aspect with the wingspan, yeah. you can take off in really light winds, which okay. is really important. If you go with the MF1200, yeah. then that's even like it's even better for the low end. Fantastic. So it covers a huge cool. wind range. Cool. That, do you have a, a breakdown or a suggestion? You know, somebody who is jumping into the class, um, you know, say with intermediate experience, do you have a suggestion for, you know, which wings they could go for first? Um, say you have an average wind speed of maybe 12 to 14 knots. Uh, what would you recommend for uh, the kids getting on the board some of the earliest times and for having fun? Me personally? Yeah. Uh, I would say. It depends on the kid, like mm -hmm. one part of me would say a kid should start on the MF-1200. Okay. I know that that's okay. a slightly lower aspect wing because mm -hmm. we wanted to limit the span to make it yeah. a little bit more controllable. So I know that that wing is actually a little bit easier to ride overall. Okay. Great. Um, having said that, I know that 99% of the time we, as in you, me, everyone in the industry, yeah. we are always underestimating kids. Yes. <laughs> and like we have like a, in Thailand, we have a kid who's six years old Fantastic. and he's riding on the Team R560. Wow. You know, yeah. but for him, he's like, he's, he's a little kid. Yeah. It's and it's normal fun. and he's just beating every, he's, he's faster than me, you know, you're racing <laughs> and he's got a little kid beside you just going like this, you know. So we underestimate kids. Yeah. And I say, 
the most important is that they need to have really a lot of fun yeah. and they feel, they feel inspired. So in, if that's the case, I would actually think the 820 is, is the one to go for. And that actually is a really good point too because you know it is kind of unique that in you know developing a one design class to actually have the ability to choose three different front wings, yeah. to be able to accommodate different ability levels, the fun factor, you know, the condition levels and whatnot. Um, could you take half a second to speak about the 560, which is the smallest front wing in the range? Uh, the smallest 560, so that was actually the very first MF wing. It's a lot smaller. Obviously, it's the fastest one. It's the one that you would use for the strongest wind. Okay. Um, okay, um, could you talk a little bit about the uh, mass that we're going to be having for uh, the X15 Junior class? You know, talking about um, we did decide to go with aluminum versus mm -hmm. carbon mm -hmm. for accessibility, mm -hmm. inclusivity, um, and just can you talk a little bit about the connections between the fuse, foils, and then the mass as well? Um, on the mass, it's very interesting. I watched you uh, present the choice, the selection parts, and I saw a lot of people um, question the choice of an aluminum mast. Yeah. It's very interesting because my guess is that they have not tried the aluminum mast. <laughs> Once you've tried this mast, you kind of think the other way around, like mm -hmm. why would we actually need a carbon mast? It's so fast, so much fun, so controllable, so stiff that to me, like as the one who's designing and, and, and uh, doing the foil stuff, yeah. I, I feel like, should I feel bad for selling a carbon mast? Because <laughs> you don't actually get that much more. <laughs> you do, if you're a racer, you do. Yeah. But here we're talking one design. Yeah. And you know, we, we talked about how the class, you just want to inspire people and then have fun racing. Yeah. If it wasn't for the psychological aspect, the aluminum mast is, is already that. Yeah. But having said that, I can see people's, they just love carbon. We humans, we just, I don't know, we you like carbon because it's carbon, you know? Yes. But this mass is actually amazing in itself already. Cool. And we're going to be using a 100 centimeter mass. A 100 so centimeter mass, that's a good choice. Uh, everyone's gravitating to 100 centimeters. I think that's a, that's a great dimension. You guys have also chosen what we call here the evolution system, mm -hmm. which is great because it's super stiff, super reliable. I think when you come to one design, that's the most important thing. You just want it to yeah. be simple, it just works, and it's like really reliable. Good. And can you talk a little bit about, you know, in wing foiling, um, there are racers that typically gravitate towards tuttle boxes rather than a plate to attach the foil to the board. And can you talk a little bit about the um, pros of having a tuttle box, which is going to be used for racing compared to having a, a base plate? Uh, I think the choice of a deep tuttle is absolutely on the money. It's uh, spot on. Deep Tuttle, I, it's, it's what racers would want. You, you don't take anything with a top it really seriously. I think it's the right choice for racing. Having said that, um, there are some arguments for top eight, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> yeah, I, sorry, I can't support you that much on this one. No, it's um, okay. Yeah, I think it's a, it's, a, it's the right choice. Is it possible for somebody to change out the Tuttle on here with this mast and then be able to put a base plate on to try it on a board that doesn't have a tuttle box. Yes, absolutely. So this foil, it's on a V8 mast that has two adapter heads. You've got okay. one for deep tuttle and one for top plate. Are there any last minute things that you want to share with the world about an X15 class foils, MF, um, your thoughts, design processes for coming up with these new creative um, innovative? No, I, uh, just as a closing statement, I'd say I'd, I'd l I love the concept of an X15. And I can't wait for seeing the X15 like all over the world, kids everywhere, youth everywhere, just racing each other on one design. I think that'll be fantastic.